Chapter 28 Taking the Kuula from the Cave The next day, Thursday, Mr. Johnson planned to do all the work needed to be attended to around the lighthouse. This would probably take about three or four hours. When this was done, he would take Domingo with him to bring the Kuula back to the lighthouse. It was about 10 o'clock when he finished with his work. He called Domingo to come with him and go to the same place where he had picked him up the day before. Domingo was surprised, but did not say a word. This was the beauty of having a man like Domingo. In the first place, Domingo was not interested in the Kuula. He was only interested in his work with Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson told his wife that he and Domingo were going to check the pickup truck and that they would go up the hill and back. His wife did not pay any attention. Domingo did the driving. Mr. Johnson broke the news of the Kuula rock that he found in the cave and that they were going to pick up the rock and bring it down to the lighthouse. Domingo looked at him and did not say a word. To him, it was only a job to be taken care of. At that moment, about halfway toward the hill, the pickup truck stopped. Domingo tried to start it again but the engine would not turn over. Mr. Johnson opened the hood and inspected the wires attached to the spark plugs and the ignition. Everything was in perfect order. He thought maybe the gas line was plugged with dirt. He took it off and cleaned it out. There was nothing wrong. It took a couple of hours before they could start the truck. By the time they got to the hill, it was about one o'clock in the afternoon. Mr. Johnson told Domingo, We will park the pickup truck out here on the road. You and I will go into the cave to pick up the Kuula rock. Domingo asked, How do you know the rock is there? Mr. Johnson told Domingo the whole story about what he was doing there the day before. Domingo just looked at him and listened. Then he spoke up. Let's go. Why wait? This made Mr. Johnson happy, knowing that Domingo understood what he was doing. In Domingo's mind, it only reflected that the fish he was talking about three miles out in the deep could be brought in by this Kuula rock. He had heard Mr. Johnson saying this some time before when he pointed out the fish to him. He was as anxious as Mr. Johnson. There was only one difference. Mr. Johnson wanted to make money and Domingo had a job to be done. Mr. Johnson carried his flashlight and gave another to Domingo. He also had a handbag with extra batteries and a cloth to wrap the Kuula rock. Domingo asked, Where is the cave? Mr. Johnson pointed to the high mound beyond the stone wall fence and said, That is where we are going. Have you ever been in a burial cave? Domingo replied, No, I have been in many caves in the Philippines, but not in a burial cave. They climbed the stone wall and walked to the mound where the entrance was. Mr. Johnson told Domingo that if he was afraid to go in, he could wait for him outside, but Domingo insisted that he wanted to go in and see what was in there. Mr. Johnson started walking ahead, shining his light and carrying his handbag. Domingo followed closely behind him. They came to the first room or chamber. Before entering, Mr. Johnson dropped the red cloth on the ground and then walked to the stone bowls and lit two of them with a match. Both Mr. Johnson and Domingo made a thorough search of the chamber. There was nothing to be added to what Mr. Johnson had seen the day before. Then they moved to the next chamber where Mr. Johnson dropped a red cloth at the entrance for a return marker. As they entered, Mr. Johnson spoke to Domingo. This is the burial chamber. Those skeletons are all Hawaiians. Come with me to that wooden box. You will see a Hawaiian giant. This skeleton is not the same as the others lying here. The two looked at the giant skeleton. Mr. Johnson said, you see in his hand the Kuula rock. 
This is the rock we are going to take to the lighthouse and place on a flat stone called the altar. Mr. Johnson reached down and picked up the rock. He handed it to Domingo and told him to wrap it in the white cloth that was in the bag. After that was done, Domingo spoke. You were here yesterday, alone. Didn't you feel lonesome coming in here? Mr. Johnson replied, Sometimes I felt I should turn back, but I knew I must get that rock. Domingo carried the kuula and the bag, and Mr. Johnson picked up the red cloths and blew out the stone lights on their way out. As they emerged from the cave, Domingo said, This rock is very light, and I have a funny feeling when carrying it. Maybe because I am not a Hawaiian, the spirit does not like me. You had better carry it because you are Hawaiian. Mr. Johnson took the rock from Domingo. They climbed over the stone wall and headed for the pickup truck out on the road. Mr. Johnson laid the kuula in the back of the truck. It was then about four o'clock. This time, Mr. Johnson decided to drive. They had traveled just a short distance when the motor stopped. He tried to start it again, but the engine seemed dead. They checked every angle, but could not find the trouble. The only answer was to walk to the lighthouse and get the car to pull the pickup truck. Domingo said he would walk and bring back the car. It was only about a half-mile walk. Mr. Johnson went to the back of the pickup truck and unwrapped the Kuula rock. He looked at the rock and figured that maybe the rock had something to do with the trouble with the truck. As he gazed on the rock, he began to think that the rock might be alive. Then he said to himself, It cannot be. I am just imagining things. If Kemma knew he had the rock, would he be surprised? He wrapped up the rock again and left it in the back of the pickup truck. He walked to the front of the truck, opened the hood, and began to check the wires that led to the ignition. There was nothing wrong. He then sat in the front seat to wait for Domingo. It was about five o'clock, and still Domingo did not come. While he was sitting there, he began to reflect on this rock, whether it was all right to take from the cave and put it on the altar rock. Also about picking up the fish and selling them to the different restaurants. He said to himself, I don't think there is anything wrong. Maybe in the old days when a taboo was proclaimed it was official, but now everybody has left and the taboo is broken, and I don't think it will hurt me. All that was said about the kuula is different now. Who can hurt me? Only a human being. How can a spirit hurt me? It cannot hurt me. I do not believe this taboo that the Hawaiians believe that the spirit will come and strike me. He looked up and saw the car coming to tow the pickup truck back. Domingo backed the car to the front of the pickup truck, and Mr. Johnson got the rope and tied the truck to the car. He told Domingo to drive slowly. Domingo noticed that the pull was heavy even though the pickup truck was empty. It pulled like a heavy truck. This puzzled Mr. Johnson. They arrived at the lighthouse about six o'clock. Mr. Johnson left the kuula in the pickup truck and took the handbag and flashlights into the house. <laughs>